Hello, my name is Rachel Klima. I'm a lunar geologist and remote sensing scientist in the Moon and Rocky Planets group at the Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Laboratory. I'm also the Lunar Technology and Science Advisor for the APL Lunar Surface Innovation Initiative. Other hazards to consider on the lunar surface are those due to impacts. The lunar environment hosts a high frequency of impact events, both natural and human-made. These events range in size, speed, and flux density. One of such is the background flux of primary micrometeoroids. These are less than one millimeter in diameter with masses less than 0.01 grams. The flux is variable depending on the location on the moon, but their impacts reach speeds as high as 72 kilometers per second with an average of 22 to 23 kilometers per second. For your visualization, at seven kilometers per second, an aluminum sphere can penetrate completely through an aluminum plate four times the sphere's diameter. Now imagine a 22 kilometer per second sphere. Other hazards include the meteor showers. Meteor storms persist for a few hours to a few weeks. These make up a small fraction of the meteoroid environment and can produce significant short-term enhancements of the meteoroid flux. Another important hazard is impact ejecta, which is comprised of melt, vapor, and particle debris that is released upon impact impingement. An image of the Aristillus crater melt flow is shown on the right. The mass of fragment and dust ejecta can be 50 to 100 times that of the impactor and have typical speeds of 0.1 kilometers per second, in some rare cases reaching hypervelocity. Human activities on the lunar surface will likely produce additional hazards due to lofting material during landing and rover transit. One of the key challenges associated with impact hazards is their limited predictability. It is often incorrectly assumed that meteoroid impacts primarily occur during meteor showers. Instead, the vast majority of hazardous meteoroids belong to the sporadic complex, which makes them harder to predict. In contrast to meteor showers, micrometeoroid flux is not isotropic in its directionality, unless you consider larger impactors. More obviously, impact hazards are destructive events that can be mission-ending. Both impacts and their secondary ejecta can destroy, disable, or reduce the operational quality and lifetime of systems. An example is shown in this image for the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter camera, which was impacted by a 0.8 millimeter object, causing a sudden and extreme cross-track oscillation of the camera. Even more critical is their hazard to humans. For example, surface debris due to an impact is capable of penetrating an astronaut spacesuit, which can happen during extravehicular activities. All in all, we need to protect lunar systems and human assets from lunar and orbital debris, ejecta, and induced impacts. To this need, the NASA Meteoroid Environment Office produces the Meteoroid Engineering Model, or MEM, currently in its third version. This tool utilizes data parameters for micrometeoroids, such as flux, mass, and velocity, and assesses the probability of meteoroid impacts, predicts the resulting damage to system components, and estimates the appropriate amount of shielding needed to mitigate the damage. MEM-3 does not include meteor showers or storms, but a factor of 10% can be added to the meteoroid risk assessment to account for them. Shielding can be developed from numerous materials such as metal bumpers or blankets and follow strategic designs such as Whipple shields. The classic shields combine high density and low density materials at different distances from each other to absorb the impactor's shock energy. The NASA Handbook for Designing Micrometeoroid and Orbital Debris Protection is a fantastic resource that provides knowledge on effective protection methods used for the International Space Station, Space Shuttle, and various science spacecraft. Your design might demand hypervelocity impact tests to ensure its adequate shielding and protection. These tests can be conducted with two-stage light gas guns that accelerate projectiles up to seven kilometers per second or in more specialized facilities that can enable much higher speed, such as the three-stage hypervelocity launcher developed at Sandia National Laboratory that can achieve projectile speeds as high as 15 kilometers per second. These steps help derive ballistic limit equations for modeling and simulation. Other considerations are your landing site selection and any modeling that can inform your local hazards due to landing activities, such as plume ejecta and plume surface interaction modeling. Thanks for watching, and I hope this module has been informative.